Intro, millions of lives are affected by cancer. It says every year millions of lives are affected by cancer, and the earlier it's detected, the better the chances of survival. But how do we detect cancer before symptoms appear? The answer lies in your blood. Today we'll explore tumor markers, special substances that may signal the presence of cancer in your body. Welcome to your lab companion. In this video, we'll break down what tumor markers are, how they work, and when these tests are actually helpful. Section one, what are tumor markers? Narration, tumor markers are proteins, hormones, or other substances produced by cancer cells or by the body in response to cancer. They're often found in the blood, urine, or tissues of people with cancer. But here's the catch, not all cancers produce tumor markers. And sometimes non-cancerous conditions can also raise these markers. So tumor markers are not diagnostic alone. They are used alongside imaging, biopsy, and other tests. Section two, when are tumor markers used? Doctors don't just use tumor markers for diagnosis. They are used for a screening, high-risk individuals, confirming cancer presence with other tests, monitoring treatment response, detecting recurrence after surgery or chemotherapy. If someone has prostate cancer and receives treatment, the PSA level is monitored regularly to check if cancer is coming back. Initially, common tumor markers and what they mean. Let's break down the most common tumor markers you'll see on a blood test report. Number one, PSA, prostate-specific antigen, used for prostate cancer, perhaps normal range, zero to four NGPM. High PSA may suggest prostate cancer, but also BPH or prostatitis, often used in men over 50 as a screening tool. Two, CA-125, Cancer Antigen 125, used for ovarian cancer. Normal range less 35 UPREM. High CA 125 doesn't always mean cancer. It can rise in endometriosis, menstruation, or pelvic infections, often used to monitor treatment in ovarian cancer patients. Three, CA Antigen, used for colorectal, lung, breast, and pancreatic cancers. Normal range less than 2.5 nanogram per millilile, non-smokers. CEA is mainly used to track cancer recurrence. Rate levels can also be high in smokers or liver disease. Four, AFP, alpha fetoprotein, used for liver cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma, testicular cancer, normal range less than 10 nanogram per millilile. High AFP levels are significant in hepatitis, cirrhosis, and liver cancer. Five, CA, 19 to nine, used for pancreatic and bile duct cancers. Normal range, less than 37 U per millilile. Can be elevated in pancreatitis and gallstones too. It's not a good screening test, but great for tracking treatment. Six, HCG, human chorionic gonadotropin. Used for testicular cancer, germ cell tumors. Normal and non-pregnant individuals should be undetectable. Less high in pregnancy and in certain cancers. Often used with AFP for testicular tumors. 7 BRCA1, BRCA2 mutations, genetic markers, used for breast and ovarian cancer risk. These are not blood tests for cancer presence, but for genetic risk best too. People with BRCA mutations have up to 80% risk of breast cancer. Testing helps in early screening and preventive treatment. Note, no tumor marker is perfect. Elevated results don't always mean cancer. That's why they must be interpreted by doctors with full context. Section four, how reliable are tumor marker tests? Narration, tumor markers are helpful, but not foolproof. Some are very specific, like PSA for prostate. Others are very nonspecific, like CEA or CA125. False positives can happen due to infection, inflammation, or benign growths. A single elevated value is never enough to confirm cancer. Always combine results with Imaging, CT scan, MRI, PET. Biopsy, clinical examination. Should you get tested without symptoms? If you're wondering, should I get a tumor marker test just to be safe? The answer is only if your doctor recommends it. Routine screening with tumor markers is not advised unless you have a strong family history, you carry a genetic mutation, you're being monitored after previous cancer, or your doctor suspects a specific issue Testing without reason may lead to unnecessary fear, procedures, and costs. To sum up, tumor markers are valuable tools, especially in cancer monitoring, but not always reliable for diagnosis. 
If you or someone you love is facing cancer, understanding these tests can help you ask better questions and take informed steps. Save this video, share it with someone who might need clarity, subscribe to your lab companion, because every report has a story and we're here to help you read it.